math 43 had a question coming out of chapter 7 number 65 and here we were told that the length of songs in an ITU, a collector's iTunes album collection is uniformly distributed from two to three and a half minutes so buzzwords that I hear in there I hear uniform right and I hear two to three point five minutes so I can hear that my variable in this case, it's continuous numerical, right? Because it's basically time and the units are minutes. And so I have a continuous numerical variable. And because it told me the, the distribution was nor not normal, excuse me, uniform, I, I know that I can do the little squiggles U. And then it says we're going to randomly pick five albums from the collection and basically sample 43 songs on the five albums. So the other thing I hear is that I'm gonna have a sample and my sample size is 43. So anytime I hear sample, I have to think, okay, I bet I'm gonna head over to a sampling distribution. All right, so there's your population distribution, your original graph, which is gonna be up here, and then we always wanna look at averages, right? And we're gonna see, are they normal, right? Do they have a mean? Do they have a standard error? That's over squared on there. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna play all of that out here. So I'm gonna start with part A and then I'm gonna come back to this note. So part A is just saying, hey, what's the uh, variable? And it's the length of the song in this iTunes collection album or album collection and the units are minutes. And it told me it was uniformly distributed. Okay, so this is where we have to kick back to chapter five and this is where I go to my notes. So I want you to just recall that from chapter chapter five, we knew that the mean formula was a plus b over two, and here was the standard deviation formula, keeping in mind that a is always the lower number and b is the high number, right? Our min, max, our spread. So I have that the average length of a song in this iTunes collection is about 2.75 minutes, and it deviates by, by about 0.433 minutes. And why that's important is because when we build the sampling distributions, right, we keep the mean from our population and we take the standard deviation from our population and divide by the square root of n. Well, I need to know what the mean and the standard deviation are. And now we have it, right? We have them as four point, excuse me, 2.75 and 0.433 respectively. So I need to crunch these two numbers so I can move to my sampling distribution. And then part C, I believe, are we up to C? Yes, in C, it says, what's X bar? Well, that's the average length of the 43 songs in the iTunes album collection. And then I get to say that that distribution, and I'm gonna talk about why I can put the N here in a moment, but we know the mean stays the same. Actually, let me color code this the right way. The mean stays the same, right? And then the population standard deviation gets divided by the square root of that sample size, and that gets us our standard error. Now, I do want to talk about why I can put the n right here. So let me, let me circle that, and that's going to be important. We're in mean land, right? So the two ways to get um, normality in mean land is if the population distribution is stated to be normal, right? And it wasn't, right? Our population distribution was uniform, so I didn't get normality that way. But I did get it from the central limit theorem, which says that your sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30, and mine was 43, so I'm good to go. So I can put the n here, and that allows me to use normal CDF or inverse norm, depending on what question is asked of you. And for part E, they're asking for the first quartile. So the first quartile, again, this would be off of the sample mean, all right, so since we're off of the sampling distribution and the sampling distribution was normal, I'm gonna use inverse norm, right? Percentile, mean, standard error, and there's my answer, right? If I want the third quartile, and again, the third quartile from the sampling distribution, this means plug in the 75th percentile, mean, standard error, and get your number, and then you would just subtract those two if you wanted to actually find the IQR. And I really want to point out that this is for the sampling distribution. If this had asked you for Q1 of the population distribution, you would have done base times height equaling 0.25. We would have gone back to that, that mechanics that we learned about in chapter five, where you take base times height and you set it equal to your percentile. And the reason I would do this formula is because the population distribution was uniform, and that's the rules we have in the uniform distribution. All right, so with all of that, there is my answer to number 65. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.